Hey, I'm Zed. And I'm Z. So, we're going to talk about Pokemon. Yes, uh, in case you can't tell, I'm a 90s kid. And so, I, I enjoy myself some Pokemon. That That's nostalgia to me. That's something me and, you know, I, I have, like, all of Kanto, all of Johto on DVD. So I loved Pokemon when it came out. Um... I actually had some of the original cards when they first came out. Yep, me too. I I had red and blue. No, I had blue. My brother had red. And I think we got yellow at one point. Yeah, I got started and I got Pokemon Gold. It's my first Pokemon game, but my brother had uh, blue that he had gotten traded from a friend. And uh, then when Crystal came out, I got Crystal and kind of just set me off. I got every Pokemon game, you know, I could get, you know, at least one copy of it. So if there were two games in where they split it up, like an X or a Y, I only got one. But Yeah, I, I don't like the idea that they're split up, but I also understand why they're split up. You know, it's they've done it from the start, so I don't hate that they do it. I understand that's just kind of how they roll, and I'm cool with it. Um, you know, it provides a social aspect to the game, but it's one of those... It's given a lot of fun things over the years. And, you know, as you'll kind of see here in my top list here that we're about to cover, it's led to some little bit of heartbreak for me, because if you know version exclusives and kind of what that deal is, mm. you'll kind of recognize off this list, at least, especially in my starting games, where I kind of ran into that. I don't think any of mine has exclusives from one or the other. Not really, no. Alright, so what we're going to actually be doing in this video, because I don't think we've posted that shit, uh, we're going to be talking about our top six Pokemon from all the games. Now, we did not want to include legendaries. Those are kind of their own category. But since you get six Pokemon in your party, and we kind of figured that was the perfect number to do, um, kind of represent this and kind of kick it off with like a, you know, see if y'all want Pokemon content, like opening packs or things like that. Yeah. Pokemon's got a card game um, on top of its video game component. So it does. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it's only been the latest craze with all the box openings and the craziness making it so hard to get right now. Oh, I know. In fact, our local shop, because it's so hard and it's so... He's had to limit how many packs you can buy at once. There was just too many problems with scalpers coming in and trying to sell it secondhand. He kind of put a shutdown to that, but, uh, you know... And we're not putting any shame on anyone that has to do that. Hey, you take care of business your way. No, I mean, it's your choice. I just, I personally prefer to see the cards or the products in the hands of people who want to play with them. Yeah. Uh, especially since Pokemon's demographic is going to be a younger crowd. Uh, you know, I, I would like to see new generations, new people get into it, um, you know, without getting too personal. I've My daughter has kind of gotten into Pokemon, so it's one of those, I, I like having that kind of entry point for younger people. And even my son and daughter both love... My daughter doesn't understand the game. She's too young. Yep. My son is learning and wanting to play. Uh, so, I, I love Pokemon because it really hasn't changed. Uh, the more things change, the more they stay the same. And it's been a lot of... There's been some changes, but they stay the same. They've stayed to their roots primarily. So, yeah. it doesn't... You know, I've had friends who got back into it and, like, I haven't played since, you know, Red and Blue. And I picked up Sun and Moon and played, and it, it was just like, oh, hey, it's all the familiar feeling. It was great. Um, I wouldn't necessarily go on my way to buy everyone, but it was a very fun experience. So, it's one of those, it's got that longevity because it still appeals to both the new and the old fan, which, frankly, that's, for a game series that's been going that long, that's all I can ask for. Yeah. Alright, so to jump into the list, I'm going to start off with the original OG Bulbasaur. That was my first starter. Yeah, Bulbasaur was pretty good. I enjoyed it as a starter Pokemon. 
you know, it's got some useful utility there. So it'll be fun. It'll be interesting. And, you know, I, I do like it. It's also got its own little snarky attitude in the anime, which, you know, come on. Bulbasaur was awesome. He's great. He's absolutely great. You can't be mad at him. No. And, yes, Ivysaur and Venusaur I love, but I just had... He was the guy that started my Pokemon journey with. Yeah, definitely. Um, so for me, I'm going to kind of go with my number six Pokemon, and that's going to be Sazba from Generation 5, the seasonal deer Pokemon. Oh. Um, you know, it, I always love the idea of rolling between the seasons and things changing and these Pokemon and adapting to their environment, and... Honestly, Sawsbuck perfectly encapsulates that to me. Oh, hey, the spring version is, you know, all kind of just showing up. Oh, hey, the winter version, it's got, like, snow tufts and spur, or at least it looks like that. So, I love it. Um, on top of that, it's a normal grass type. Oh, not really? just It's not just grass, it's normal grass. So, it's got this interesting type combination that... If you're playing in like the in the games, it leads to some interesting things where it's like, okay, cool, I get stab, you know, a stab stomp or whatever, and deal more damage. So it's hmm. always cool. It's always fun, and you know, I actually don't remember that Pokemon. Yeah, so you'll 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 get to see it in editing, and like I said, I really enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, you you probably seen the guys right about here. Yeah, and if we're lucky. He'll do us all the work and just do all four forms. Oh, thank you. Thank uh -huh. you. You're welcome. That was uh, Future Me. That was him that decided that. My second one. Um, I'm actually going to go to the bottom of my list, which I actually did it off of uh, the numbers that they are put into the Pokedex, the National Pokedex. Sharpedo. It's a shark. And I love the effect because it took, as a kid, it took me the longest time to figure out why Pokemon were taking damage when it, when they hit my Sharpedo or I hit the Sharpedo. And then I realized the added effect of uh, shark skin or something. Yeah. It dealt damage when you did a normal attack to it. Yeah, so if it was hit by a physical attack, it was dealt some damage and recoil. And I love that. And it's a shark. We love... I mean, jars. Jaws. Yeah, I mean, not my cup of tea, but I know people do enjoy sharks. Um, yeah. So, kind of going to my next one. Um, we're going to go with Emo Bird itself. That's Star Raptor. Um, so... Going back in the day, applying Diamond Pearl Platinum from scratch, just kind of blind. It's like, okay, cool, you get this, you get Starly, it's a small little bird, it's the regional bird Pokemon. Oh. Then you get Quillava, and he's got that little just tuft in its, you know, kind of hair, so to speak. And it's just like, oh, you kind of look like a dork, but, you know, whatever, it's <laughs> great. Um, you're pretty good, pretty quick. And then you get Staraptor. And it's just got a bevy of moves that just want to wreck things. Brave Bird, Close Combat, you can always roost and then, you know, take like something like Giga Impact on it and just like, okay, cool, this thing's just a tank. It's just going to wreck you. Because while it wasn't always the most resilient thing in the world, what it wanted to do was it wanted to glass cannon you real bad. So it just hits you hard, hits you fast, and make you feel its presence. And like I said, it's just, it screams that tough, snarky, emo kid attitude. I enjoy it. It's adorable. Okay, so my next one was, okay, this is the one that I think we, we were, I was confused on. It's not Shard Ninja, it's... I, I think it was Shed Ninja. Shed Ninja? Yeah. This guy. It's the ghost bug. And what I loved about it was, it only had one hit point. But it could only be hit by a critical hit. No, it was super effective moves. Oh yeah, super effective. Or environmental things. So hail would kill it, sandstorm would kill it. Oh, really? Yep. I never ran up against those. Uh, me and a couple buddies long ago, 
we actually started a league with the games and we would battle each other. This was the god killer. Because no one could take him out because they didn't know the effect. And then once they learned his little thing, of course he died. And I had to retire him. But yeah. it was fun. And how you got him. Yeah, so it it was a lot of hoops to jump through. And if you didn't know what you were doing to wind up having this Pokemon randomly show up in your party, just like, where did you come from? This is the other one's the evolution. Where are you? Where did you come from, Ghost Cicada? <laughs> yeah, and the, the first time you get this guy... It, when you evolve them, you have to have an open spot. Because if you don't, you don't get it. Yep. It's amazing. It's awesome. And it's one of those quirk, quirky little Pokemon that made Pokemon, I think, in what it is with some of the quirks. And honestly, they're still doing that to this day. Even in the most recent generation, it's you have to spit. You have to have the Pokemon holding a particular item and spin it a certain amount of times or in certain directions to get different evolutions. So, they've done this in a lot of creative ways. There's one that you have to evolve with your, you know, DS or whatever upside down, um, because yeah. So, it, it, they they've done some interesting gimmicks with evolution, and some of them have worked out. Some of them. Have not always been the best, but hey guys, if you really like uh, the Pokemon content and want to see some more, down below, subscribe and let us know. And we may go through and make a complete list or a semi complete list of the quirkiest, weirdest, evolving Pokemon. I thought you were about to sign us up for something a lot more intensive than that. So, you know, <laughs> it's one of those. Or if you want to see what his idea is. Stay tuned. Yeah, that that my idea might have to be for like a huge subscriber goal, and it might have to be a live stream. Let's just put it that way. Subscribe, guys. Get us there. Back to the list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I mean, Shinji was really cool. Um, like I said, it was a great thing. But uh, kind of moving on to my next one on the list. Um, it. If you're one of those Gen 1ers out there, if you're one of those people who've gone in at the Sun and Moon, I think both people can appreciate this. That's going to be Ninetales. Um, yes. And frankly, I love all the Ninetales versions. Alolan, okay, cool. It's got this mystique, this ice fox spirit vibe kind of going on. Or Beautiful. Absolutely. Or just traditional OG Ninetales with, you know, the kind of Ninetail fox kitsune you know, fire-type Pokemon, which just is my jam anyway. So it's like, this Pokemon was just like, okay, cool. You like foxes. You're really into that kind of, like, the kind of the Kitsune, Ninetale Fox kind of mythos stuff you enjoy. Oh, hey, and we made it fire-type. So it's just like, okay, cool. You, you've hit my boxes on, like, it's interesting lore. It's, you know, a great Pokemon type, and it's based on one of my favorite animals. Okay, cool. No, I'm and, down with that. Good Pokemon design. And we're not talking the Ninetales from Naruto. We're talking from the Pokemon. Even though that Ninetales was interesting. Yeah, but, I, I mean, ultimately, it's still... That still goes back to the mythos behind the Nine Ninetale Tales. Fox. So, it, it's interesting if you kind of look into the history there. Lore, guys. Lore is always awesome. Uh, Blaziken. Fire chicken. That just kicked you in the head. It sounds like it's going to be a Far Cry 6 uh, mechanic. <laughs> and if you know what I'm referring to, let me know. But yeah, it's one of those... This is the birth of the annoyance of the fire fighting starter type. Jesus. This is before that train got real old real quick so this one gets the leniency there um i generally actually prefer infernate but i also yeah he just remind he he too much reminds me of um the uh monkey king yeah and, and that but that's part of why i enjoy it is i like 
the reference I, that kind of like nine tails i enjoy the reference and the lore and all that so that kind of stuff i enjoy those are bonus points to me but this is a fire chicken that's kicking you in the head I, I mean, it's a fire chicken kicking you in the head. I can't... All it is is a cockfighting ring. That's all it is. <laughs> oh, God. I, I, You know... Dad jokes. No, that that's legit what this is. Um, but, yeah, and I mean, it's one of those... It felt really unique at the time. It was a very good variation on the starters at that point. Yes. You know, it was one of those, is it going to be another Charizard where it's getting flying as its secondary type? Nope, it's fighting. Uh, here it comes in just to, you know, kind of kickbox you to the face. So, it was a nice kind of spin up, but at the same time, great Pokemon. It's up there, and, you know, honestly, that was my brother's starter for that generation. I, I took Mudkip, um, but, you know... My brother definitely made me feel it any time we would play each other. Um, so I, I knew this was a Pokemon I always had to watch out for. Well, he's a kid. Uh, going to my number three, we're kind of going right back to the Aloha region with uh, Lycanroc. And, you know, my kind of go-tos are generally going to be the midday and the dusk form, uh, the more wolf-like forms. Um, I know I mentioned in some of our Midnight Hunt or Innistrad Midnight Hunt content, which, again... If you're looking out for more, we try to have that available. Um, yeah, I'm pretty big into wolves. Wolves are my favorite animal. The foxes are up there, you know, big birds, like, and ravens and stuff are up there too. So, uh, but for me, it's like, okay, they gave us a fast rock type, not just something kind of like off the wall, like, here's another boulder. They actually got a little bit creative with this Pokemon, they made it a wolf. And, oh, hey, it's got all the fun timing of the werewolf art. Uh, like, kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? Trope. That's the word I was looking for. So, honestly, I'm all about this. You know, the, uh, the various, like, shards of rock around its collar. I love this Pokemon. This Pokemon was great. And, honestly, this Pokemon forced me so far out of my way, like, on playing Sun and Moon on the DS... I stopped what I was doing. I'm like, okay, when's the first chance I can get this Pokemon? Okay, cool. The entire playthrough is now revolved around me getting this one Pokemon. This is now my ace. Starter, I Rowlet, you are adorable little bird. I'm sorry. You are now second fiddle to Lycanroc. Lycanroc is the boy. Um, until I got one of my other mons then. Unfortunately, Lycanroc had to become second boy. But we'll get to that one later. Um... Was he, was he in some um, Sword and Show? Um, not in the base game. I have not been able to play the DLC yet. I haven't gotten uh, those downloaded, so I just haven't gotten around to it. I just be honest with you guys. I have played until the Elite Four, and I got halfway through, and I stopped with Sword Sword and Show. I've gotten through all of the base Sword and Shield and all of the base Pokemon games. Um, the main thing is I haven't played the DLCs. I haven't gone out of my way to purchase them yet. Um, I may... Look, okay. back to the... <laughs> I can sidetrack myself talking to myself. So sorry, guys. Um, Lycanroc. I don't remember that one that much. Do you remember Rockruff? Professor Kukui's, like... The little rock dog that was always running around with oh, him. Oh, That's yes. the evolution of it. Oh, okay. So it goes from adorable little puppy dog that's just rolling around with you to, oh, hey, now I'm Big Bad Wolf. Roar. Damn. All right. Uh, my next one, and I had to choose this one because there's a story behind it. Blossom. The cheerleader Pokemon. The reason I chose this Pokemon... I was playing the card game, and I dropped the car. I, I I dropped this card down, and my opponent got tired of hearing Healing Dance Solar Beat every turn. <laughs> All I would do, I put my hand down and went Healing Dance Solar Beat, killed my opponent, and he looked at me and said, "I'm done. I'm done. Great game. I'm done." 
See, that's amusing. I haven't heard that story before, so that, that that's great. The Poke Power was healing that. I healed 20 damage. He was doing 30 to me at the time. So I was healing most of my damage back, solo beam, and just kept going. Yeah, that'll get you there. And also it's just kind of cute little cheerleader looking flower. See, I always think of that, like some flora, and I just think of like Hawaiian hula dancers. So I was like, okay, that's a really cool design when it first came out, you know, especially yeah. with, you know, kind of the way it started. But the design of Pokemon really, some of them really look cool, and some of them, um, We'll discuss some of the ones we're not so a big fan of in a later video. And hopefully, because I know we've kind of discussed it, they're going to come out the same week? Yes. So that way we kind of have something to do at the start of the week, leading in some positivity on a Monday morning. And that way you can celebrate your weekend with uh, our misery. So, And maybe you guys can tell us, on, on the, the bad one, why we're wrong. Yeah. Why these Pokemon are, are the best. And why the ones we choose are wrong. Go ahead, just t tell us, guys. Well, I, I already know two of mine are probably going to get me some responses if y'all are actively involved. Because I know one of them is well-known by the community, and one of them is well-loved for its memory. So we'll kind of go from there. Okay, so... So my next one is another Gen 1-er, another Trident and True Classic. That's Vaporeon. Yes. So... Everybody loves the evolutions. Let, let's not lie there. That's just a thing that we all enjoy. Please, Pokemon Company, give us more. But two more in the next game. Just two more, please. Slowly get us there. As long as you get us there, I don't care. Yeah, don't give us all of them at once. But Vaporeon. And kind of going back into the old days, that was my water type. That was my go-to, oh, hey, I need to go learn Surf. Um, but that was also one of those Pokemon I just enjoyed growing up. I remember in the anime watching the whole thing where the brothers all had the different evolutions. Oh, yeah, the Eevee brothers. Yeah, so honestly, I just, Vaporeon's great. And for this and my number one, I actually have plushies for myself, not for my child. So it's one of those, I actually have Pokemon plushies for myself, for my top two Pokemon. Though, you know, it's one of those... They're, they're, I just, I love it. Vaporeon, great water type. And, you know, when I used to play a little bit competitive Pokemon-ish, um, really bulky, really solid, great move set. Always could put the pain on things. And, you know, I didn't have to just kind of go, oh, hey, I like this Pokemon, but it's not good, so I just can't play around with it. No, I could legit just go into the game, play with the Pokemon I liked, and have fun. <laughs> When I played Gen 2, uh, Gold and Silver, I would always get the Eevee, I would breed it, but the first one was a Victoria. Because, like you said, that was my go-to water Pokemon. Yeah. And I don't like having to be restricted by HM requirements. Um, there are Pokemon for that. Yes. Um, you know, as blasphemous as it might be, you know, going back to Gold and Silver... That's what the that's what the Gyarados is for. That's what uh, Krabby is for. Uh, so yeah, Red Gyarados Mount in the Lake of Rage. That doesn't go to my team. That doesn't go to my team. It's my HM Pokemon because it it learns all the HMs I need. And realistically, I don't want the physical attacking water type. I want my Vaporeon. I want my bulk. I want my survivability. So do you use Red Gyarados as your HM? It's one of them, yeah. Oh my yeah. <laughs> so, I, I, like I said, I know that's probably triggering a bunch of people like I am Zed here, but at the same time, that's my preference. I prefer the defensive water type Pokemon over the physical attacking type. True. So, that's a personal preference there. Uh, okay, so, I think our last one is directly the same. Uh, it's not directly the same, but it's close. It's very, very close. Mine is Arcanine. Yes. Um, so there was a plushie I found online for like a full-size Arcanine. It's like 800 bucks. I want it. I'm not spending that money. Oh. Yes, it goes right into the hobby room. Yes, there it would never be used. But at the same time, it's just like to say you have it, that's pretty cool. 
Um, that would... But yeah, Arcanine is one of those Pokemon I, I really enjoy. It's great. Um, even nowadays, they always manage to keep it viable because its moveset is just so expensive. Oh, yeah. And if you're, you know, one of the OG Pokemon guys, it was supposed to be a legendary Pokemon. Yes. The, uh... So, I, I'm, I, I enjoy it for that factor. Do I think it's a good thing they rolled it back in? Yeah, I think it's one of those staple Pokemon you can pretty much put in any Pokemon game, and know. Okay, cool. Worst case scenario, if we don't throw a bunch of other fire types in there, let's say we only put four or five in the game, cough, cough, Sinnoh. Um, though I'm glad we're getting that re the remakes. Um, you know, it's one of those, we're okay with that. We've got a solid fire type Pokemon that can go with the starter evolutionary line and gives an, gives enough options there that we don't have to worry that the player is going to be without a fire type that can do anything. I also like that Arcanine was in one of the episodes mm -hmm. where James had one at his house. Yeah, he's he's got Growlithe. Um, and no, no, in the episode it was evolved into an Arcanine. Okay, I didn't know that there was an episode where it was already evolved, but I know he had Growly. That was his Growlithe. Yeah. And it showed that James is the best Pokemon trainer out of anyone in the anime because he actually loves and cares about his Pokemon. Yeah, he's a criminal, but at the same time, he's an amazing person. So it's just like, okay, cool. Um, yeah. Team Rocket, I mean, again, I can go into tangents, but Team Rocket, really? Come on, guys. James, just quit and go home. Yes, you got to marry the one lady. Like, dude. You're rolling around with a, a carbon copy of her anyway. So, I mean. that That is absolutely true. Wait, are the, they're, they're mine? I'm going to Kansas. They might as well be cousins. But let's just put it that way. Go ahead. Um, and so my number one is Growlithe. <gasps> yeah, uh, I love the little Puffo. He is great. He is adorable. Don't get me started on Arceus and what blasphemy they have done to my boy. But uh, I don't like the regional variant they're doing in Arceus. Oh. Yeah, so that, that's why I kind of emphasize. I like OG Growlithe. Um, I have they, not... Paid attention to anything on Arceus? Arceus looks like it's going to be a great game. Don't like what they're doing to my boy. It makes me sad. He doesn't need to be rock type. He, they're making fire rock. Um, no! Yeah. Uh, Slugma exists for that role. So does Macargo. And uh, they still actually have a purpose because they're actually defensive fire type Pokemon, which is rare. Um, but yeah. No, Growlithe. Um, you know, he evolves into a great Pokemon. Yes. He himself is a great Pokemon to have around. And at the end of the day, it's one of those, you can build a solid team around it, and it's not like you're waiting for a level. You can choose when you want to pull the trigger and evolve them into Arcanine. That, Firestone. That is the beauty part about Growlithe. I like Growlithe also because he looks like he would just be fun to go out in your backyard and play fetch with. It's a doggo. Who doesn't like doggos? I mean, that's the thing, is I, I'm a dog guy anyway. So it didn't take much convincing for me to go, hey, you like dogs, right? Yeah, do you like these fire breathing dogs? That's pretty cool. Oh, hey, and did I mention that this is gonna be one of the first Pokemon you ever catch in a Pokemon game? Okay, cool, I think I'm sold. On top of that, it being the police dog of the Pokemon oh, universe yes. for a long portion of time, it's like, okay, cool. Uh, when I was younger, I was definitely into, like, you know, wanting to be a cop. And, like, a lot of kids were. So it was like, okay, cool. Everything just lines up. I like this Pokemon. It's it's great. So I just thought of something. If you're playing fetch with Growlithe, don't throw a Firestone. No, absolutely not. Unless you want to become an Arcanine. Then, you know, go Because I, I could just see that Growlithe jumps, catches the Firestone falls, mm -hmm. and then falls on your brother. That sounds like a bad day for your brother. <laughs> or a good day for you. Maybe, maybe that mean, just means more Christmas. I don't know. <laughs> hey, if my brother's actually watching this, I would totally do it to you. My brother's not watching this, but, you know, my brother's got other things to do. So. Um, overall, I like most Pokemon. I really do. Uh, these are just the ones that I chose. Because I would literally build a team around most of these Pokemon. 
Yeah, and for me, these are my top six. These are my favorite Pokemon whatsoever, at least at time of recording. Um, and again, we're before the Diamond, Pearl, Platinum remakes. Uh, I don't think they're doing Platinum, but... Um, and we're before Arceus, so it's one of those... We just have... We just kind of... Feels like we're finished with Sword and Shield for now, so... We, we've got a bunch of Pokemon to pick from, and honestly, this is one of those times... You want to go find your favorite? This is the time to figure them out, because... We're just going to keep getting more. <laughs> yes. I mean, we're at... Uh, almost 900? I think we're pushing close to 1,000, if not more. Right there would be the actual number. Um, yeah, it's crazy. Um, though, overall, Bolster is the best. He's the OG. Mm, for every good Pokemon, though, there are some bad. So stick to, stay tuned, so that way we can kind of go over what we think are some of the stinkers here in the Pokemon. And... Um, you know, I, I'm, I enjoy Let's Plays. I'm going to give a shout-out to one of the guys who I enjoy. Uh, he doesn't need it. He, everybody who's familiar with some of the stuff he's done will know him. Uh, that's Jeremy Dooley, uh, former Achievement Hunter. Or, well, I think he's still associated with them. But, you know, Voltorb will not be on the list for me on Pokemon I dislike. So, it's one of those... I wanted to get shout him out because... During the last week, I did watch a lot of his content between during some downtime where I was not, you know, feeling okay. I was in bed. So he kind of helped me through and, you know, kind of inspired me and Zed to be talking here about some Pokemon. So I figured we'd give him a shout out. And uh, yeah, like I said, I don't think he needs it. He's doing pretty well, but credit where credit's due. Hey, go check him out, guys. Um, yeah, so stay tuned. Um, Stay forever new, stay safe, we'll catch you next time. Peace. Take care.